A cyborg military ad replacing browsers, air batteries, and a bottle of water that can fill itself. These are today's bits. A neural interface between a computer and a brain. That sounds like science fiction, I know, but a new DARPA program is actually working on a device that should bridge the gap between biological signals and binary. This new technology is supposed to convert the electrochemical language our brain uses over to a digital signal for a computer to read, and, well, vice versa. Now, this is all still far away from any kind of working prototype, but they are dumping $60 million over the next four years into its development. This new program is called NESD, or Neural Engineering System Design, and they want to open up a wide variety of possibilities with this new technology. Things like sending visual or auditory information into the brain through this translator of sorts might allow new types of treatments for disabilities. Or they could just make a bunch of super soldiers that can hear conversations from a mile away or spy on people without binoculars. Personally, all I want to do is download information into my brain like Neo did in The Matrix. But since their plan doesn't involve anything anywhere close to that, I'm going to have to wait for a while. Or not see it at all. So, now that we're off topic, if you could download one subject into your brain instantly, what would it be? Let me know in the comments, but for me, it would totally be programming. I've always wished I could program. I'm just a little too slow for it. Speaking of slow, Mozilla plans on speeding up the internet by use of a Brave new browser, or actually a new Brave browser. The new Brave browser will block all ads on the internet and replace them with more user-friendly versions. And if you're like me, you're probably thinking right now, what the hell is the point of that? Well, the new browser actually wants to share profits made from the ads both with the website visited and the person visiting them. They plan on giving away 55% of all revenue generated to the website and 50 to the user. This actually kind of opens up a whole new way of browsing. I mean, most people start off with Adblock to get rid of crazy pop-ups and full-page takeovers, but they eventually end up wanting all ads to disappear for a completely clean browsing experience. This is great and all, except the internet is largely ran off of advertising, and for publishers to survive while offering free content for its viewers, they do need that ad revenue. With the new Brave browser, it will take out the crazy ads that interrupt the viewing experience and replace them with less intrusive ads while paying the viewer. If you think about it, this could actually change the internet in many ways because so many people run Adblock and more and more people are signing up for it every day. But if those people instead opted in for a revenue sharing ad supported viewing experience that did not interrupt their daily browsing, that can mean more money for publishers and possibly even better content being delivered for them as well. Time will tell. A new battery that expels air as it drains and claims to hold up to five times the amount of energy as a standard lithium ion battery. And because it discharges airs as it delivers energy, they're calling it the lithium air battery. The international team that developed it said that it stores energy in lithium superoxide that can break down more easily and produce greater efficiency and better battery life. And because it's a closed system, it can charge up just like a regular battery. Now it still has a lot of development left to make it a viable solution for modern day electronics, but if everything pans out as they plan, we might be looking at a smartphone that can last for longer than a day of heavy usage. A new bottle of water has been developed that can refill itself. The only thing it needs is a little bit of movement, like being attached to a bicycle, for example. Named Fontas, the new bottle can take humidity right out of the air and turn it into drinkable water. It does this by use of a solar-powered cooler that can produce up to half a liter of water per hour under optimal conditions. Those optimal conditions include having over 50% humidity and temperatures of around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. But since it doesn't have any kind of filtration system at all, it's not recommended for use in heavily polluted areas. But I still think it's a cool idea. For some bonus stories today, I give you Amazon offering full refunds for anyone who bought hoverboards because, you know, they're exploding everywhere. It was just found out that Google pays Apple over a billion dollars a year to be kept as a default search engine on iOS devices. Now, this is not a one-time payment type of thing, but instead they share 34% of all ad revenue generated on said devices with Apple. And Skype is finally hiding people's IP addresses to protect users from idiots who like to DDoS other people because they're lame and have no life. So gamers and streamers everywhere can now rejoice. That's it for today, guys. Follow me on Twitter to underscore bite my bits. Like and subscribe below, and thank you for watching.